In one of the first few classes I took in seminary, the instructors led us through this exercise they called the big assumption. Big assumptions are beliefs that we hold about ourselves that might be outside of our explicit awareness. Messages we got as kids, unconscious expectations or evaluations of ourselves that we can absorb through our culture, internalized judgments that we can get from friends, family, and others in our lives. The exercise we went through to discover our big assumptions involved identifying a key goal in our life at the time that we were struggling to fulfill. And then they led us through this process that helped us to determine what we were doing or not doing that was undermining our fulfilling that goal, what kinds of hidden competing commitments did we have that were causing us to behave in this way, and finally, what was that big assumption that was leading to these hidden commitments. Now to get us started, they gave us an example of someone who says something like, I'm committed to stand up for myself more often when people make unreasonable demands of me. But then goes on to admit, but instead I say yes to people even when I know I'm too busy and I take on projects that I know others are really responsible for completing. Now that would be the life goal and what they were doing that undermines it. The hidden competing commitments in this case might be, I try to avoid conflict or I want to get others to think well of me. The big assumption might be something like, if I don't do these things, no one will like me. Or it might simply be, I don't deserve respect. And then we did the exercise ourselves, and those who were willing went around the room and shared the big assumption that they had unearthed. It was a moving and revealing experience. People, often nearly in tears, said things like, I don't deserve to be loved. I'll never be attractive enough. I'll never be a good enough parent for my daughter. Our instructors said that they had done this, exercises, this exercise in churches throughout the country, both Unitarian Universalist churches and other denominations, and both with clergy and lay people. And the results on the big assumptions were always very, very similar. The assumptions almost always involve some version of not enough, don't deserve. I'll never be successful enough I don't deserve to be. Or I'll never do well enough to satisfy my parents. Or I'll never have enough house, the right car, all those expensive things that my television keeps telling me that I'm supposed to acquire. If we think about the messages we get in life, it's easy to see how such assumptions could develop. For me, it was simply, I'm not good enough. Looking back on it now, it, it's not surprising to me that I might have had that assumption. Growing up as a gay kid in a small conservative town, I got a lot of that message. As a minister in formation, though, it was vital and valuable for me to identify that that assumption was there because it could lead to a kind of perfectionism, a, a reluctance to admit to vulnerability. I had to work on letting that assumption go because a big part of doing ministry is to accept and even embrace vulnerability, to model appropriately expressing vulnerability to create a sacred space where others maybe, maybe would feel more comfortable doing so, too. Brene Brown, a researcher at the University of Houston Graduate School of Social Work, has studied people who have a strong sense of purpose and meaning in life, who feel worthy and they know that they're loved and they have this sense of belonging and connection. And what she found was one of the things that they shared in common is that they not only accept their vulnerability, 
They believe that it is part of what makes them beautiful as human beings. And there's where the issue comes in with the big assumption. It is a lie. You are enough. You are worthy. You are deserving with your vulnerabilities, with your imperfections, as you are. Now that doesn't mean we stop working to become more fully our best selves. It just helps us be in a place where we already know a deep sense of our own inherent worth and dignity. In a moment, we're going to light our burning bowl to begin our annual ritual about letting go of the things that hold us back. So I invite you now to think about something you would like to let go. Is there a big assumption that you can discover and release it? If not, maybe there's a habit or something you've been doing that works against you or one of those competing commitments you'd like to let go. Maybe letting these go will reveal the assumption that lies underneath them. Here are some examples of things you might want to let go. What other people think of you. Hoping to finally win an argument with mom. <laughs> Dad, a spouse, partner, brother, sister. The need to win arguments at all. Fixing other people trying to control things that can't be controlled, needing to be the perfect spouse, parent, son, daughter, partner, friend, or whatever occupational role you may play. Any of those sound files that run in your head saying, not enough, don't deserve. I think one of the values of doing a ritual like this it, is that it allows us to embody our thoughts and intentions, to make them concrete. It allows us to hold them in a much deeper place inside or to release something from that same deep place inside. What will you release during our burning bowl ceremony this year? We begin with a poem from Naomi Shehab Nye called Burning the Old Year. Letters swallow themselves in seconds. Notes friends tied to the doorknob. Transparent scarlet paper sizzle like moth wings. Marry the air. So much of any year is flammable. List of vegetables, partial poems, orange swirling flame of days. So little is a stone. Where there was something and suddenly isn't, an absence shouts, celebrates, leaves a space. I began again with the smallest numbers. Quick dance, shuffle of losses and leaves, only the things I didn't do crackle after the blazing dies. I'm going to invite Brooks Lewis, our fire master for today, who will now light our burning bowl. <laughs> While he's doing that, I will point out that one of the things we don't want to let go is our relative sense of safety in the sanctuary. So we do have a fire extinguisher right there. <laughs> Thank you. And now I invite you to write something you would like to let go on the slip of paper you were given as you entered. Once you've written it down, crumple the paper lightly. Don't turn it into a tight ball or it won't burn very well. And then as you're ready, we're going to start at the back and we're going to form two lines, one at the back on this aisle here and one along the window there. If you'll come from the back and up those aisles and you can take turns tossing your pieces of paper with things you want to let go. If you're not comfortable with that, you can also hand the paper to Brooks and he will put it in the fire. 
then you can return to your seats down the center aisle. Chris will play some music for us. I invite you to come forward as you feel moved to do so. <laughs> <laughs> 